Welcome to another episode of Climate Threats, where we discuss climate regulations and their impact on businesses through conversations with industry leaders, policymakers, and sustainability experts. As global orders prioritize sustainability for trade activities, India too is fast catching up. One of the most recent developments to ensure sustainability regulations do not halt trade and export has been the announcement of India's own carbon market. Since then, we have made rapid progress in defining what is green steel and most recently, what qualifies as green investments. Another key development in this regard has also been the launch of the Carbon Credit Trading Scheme, or also known as CCTS. But uh, we saw the first draft of CCTS in 2023, and this year we saw the government come forward to set out exact carbon emission targets for over 230 factories across India. But what does this scheme mean for businesses and how can they participate in it? To clear your doubts today, I have with me Shubhi Gohan. So Shubhi is a climate finance and carbon market expert whose work spans international government and private sector projects. She specializes in industrial decarbonization, climate reporting, and market-based mechanisms. Shubhi has delivered training and toolkits in carbon credits, plastic credits, Article 6 mechanisms, CCTS and CVAM, and has also served as the Joint Secretary of the prestigious Carbon Markets Association of India. She contributed to policy dialogues on carbon finance and Article 6.2 implementation, and has authored clean hydrogen reports for UNDP and the World Bank. Her research featured at the United Nations and also at the recently concluded G20 meet in Azerbaijan. She's an alumni of Terry School of Advanced Studies and at the University of Delhi. Shubhi, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the show. Hi, Sharanya. Thank you for having me here. Really looking forward to clear the doubts, which I am actually trying for long term now. So <laughs> this podcast really, really make very, it's at the right time, I would say and mm -hmm. very much required. So I would say thank you so much for organizing it and having me here. I want you to share exactly what is the carbon credit trading scheme and how does it fit into India's larger climate goals? So yeah, it's important to know what is CCTS or carbon credit trading scheme. Uh, I'll keep it in a very, very simpler language because what we have been doing it from long term, we can actually connect it how and why it has uh, come through and definitely then go down into what it helps or how it helps in India's broader climate strategy. Mm -hmm. So CCTS actually is also an extension, I would say, or the perform achieved trade that we have been already participating where more than thousand country or companies or the units across different se sectors it was i was i guess 13 plus sectors where we are or we were already doing energy efficiency trading scheme where we have been set with the different targets and reducing the targets so similar to what we were doing in perform achieve trade it will actually get transition into ccts so what is ccts and how it is different from the trading scheme that we were already having in india is that we talk about carbon here or the reduction of greenhouse gases, wherein in perform achieved trade, we were talking about energy efficiency or how we are able to reduce the targets or emissions from energy. So carbon suggests that in reducing greenhouse gases, it is India's uh, national framework, similar to what we have in China emission trading scheme, European Union trading scheme, India came up with CCTS, that is Carbon Credit Trading Scheme. So I won't say it's a domestic compliance carbon market because we also have offset trading scheme. We'll discuss what's, uh, what is offset or compliance uh, here. But just to actually talk about what it is, it is aiming to regulate emissions or as I mentioned, greenhouse gas reduction across different sectors by allocating or helping them to trade through carbon credits. 
This similarly can be done for offset mechanism where no targets or regulations has been set. To answer okay. your second question, how does it fit into India's broader climate strategy? It actually aligns with India's climate commitments under Paris Agreement. One, when we talk about national determined contributions. So India has set to reduce the emission intensity by GD of GDP by 45% by 2030. And the baseline for that is from 2005 level. So that is one that we will be focusing on. And second is definitely, since we have actually signed up and said that we will achieve net zero by 2070, that announcement also well fit into these emission target or trading scheme. So this is what CCTS and definitely do fit into the broader climate strategy, not just when we talk about 2030 targets for NDCs, but also net zero till 2070. India has been coming very close to actually meeting its goals and it is on track. Uh, yeah, but then, you know, in the larger scheme of things, when we narrow it down to the smaller businesses and how they contribute to those goals, that yeah. sort of becomes blurred or, you know, the clear trajectory for that is not defined. So for businesses hearing about CCTS for the first time, what should be the five things that you feel they should definitely know right away? Definitely the one is to actually know what are your emissions. So when I say know your emissions, there are different emissions that each of industries are doing. Greenhouse gas emissions, I would say. So they can actually participate in both voluntary and compliance market, which is gover governed under CCTS. And mm -hmm. It is not similar, but will be different from VERA or gold standard. So the current uh, uh, confusion that I have actually seen, that is my personal uh, introspection as well. And also I have felt while talking to these industries is that they are unable to differentiate between what is voluntary and what is CCTS. So whatever we have been doing in VERA or gold standard, it will keep on going until or unless we are falling under the compliance market. So first, they should know that CCTS is different from the voluntary mechanisms that are available. And there will be compliance or governed by, will be governed by Bureau of Energy Efficiency or Government of India, I would say. Once we know that, what is our emission and how it is differentiated from voluntary and compliance, I think I have answer two. The third is to know uh, that this will actually fall, or when I say the compliance, will be on hard to abate sectors. So you should know if you are actually falling under these uh, compliance or not, which you mentioned during the introduction as well, that there are 200 plus industries who fall under this compliance. So that has been come in four different sectors majorly. One is chloralkyl, second is paper and pulp, third is aluminium, and fourth is cement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might think why steel industry is not included. That is also one of our hard to abate sector. I'm not in a position to answer that today. But yeah, mm -hmm. that is also a hard to abate sector. But currently, we are not uh, 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 implying or governing or putting any compliance on them. So mm -hmm. this is uh, the third thing that they shall be aware about. Then third, they should know what is carbon credit. When they know that how much emission needs to be reduced, they shall also net that, know that it should be, it is a tradable permit. When we mm -hmm. say tradable um, uh, permit, it means that one ton CO2 equivalent or carbon dioxide equivalent will be equal to the one carbon credit that they are actually gaining. And that can be traded if you are actually overachieving your targets. So this mm -hmm. is something that they shall be aware about. And that might also be one of the reason that they'll be really happy and participate more compared to what they have been complying to. Mm -hmm. Then uh, last, I would say that the companies who are not coming under compliance, they can still participate. They can actually focus on the financial penalties or uh, extract more investors while working on the green initiatives. And definitely they'll uh, increase the reputation in the market. So these are Five things that I would also mention and I think shall be known while we are talking about CCTS, not just in the terms of compliance, but also for the industries who are not coming under. Because that is how our CCTS has been framed. 
for both voluntary that is offset and for the compliance marking yeah i get that so basically what you're saying is that um you know this is an all new opportunity for businesses regardless of the nature of their businesses they can still participate right, right. so and also i believe while we have started off with four sectors right now on the ccts the sectors are to be expanded further right in the coming yes, yes time. definitely so these are the initial mm -hmm. sectors as i mentioned these are hard to abate sectors so we are focusing mm -hmm. on these four that is also a starting point i would say but that this these are not limited it will expand in coming years or coming months or depending on so it's a draft i would say so these sectors that we have come up with or government has released it's in the draft stage so until we get it as the formalized or the complete policies that will be drafted we shall not make it as a bible i would say or start complying ourselves to these targets but rather shall wait for this it is something i would say to know that yes this will be happening or this might happen why do you think now is the time when india uh, has introduced a scheme like ccts do you feel it's the right time or should we have done this around 3 uh, or 4 years ahead when you know we saw others like china or even the european nations come up with their own uh, carbon focused regulations for trading i won't say that we are late because we were participating in voluntary carbon markets we were participating in clean development mechanism and if you see there are a lot of people who say that india had more than 90% of share in the voluntary carbon mechanism that means we were not sitting idle we were still working towards the climate initiatives so i would say it's a very positive thing to take up that even though we did not have a compliance or government initiatives were not taking place initially we were still participating so that could be one of the reason that government waited that yes you participate you learn what's happening around what is there that you can actually learn from the voluntary mechanism then only will come and put compliance on you so all the sectors you see the chlor alkali cement these are the industries who know what is carbon markets they are not one who are just not aware about and it immediately came out that you have to do it so mm -hmm. i would say it's a completely right time to be here because we know what we did in voluntary mechanism how we reduced our targets voluntarily when we actually wanted it so now we won't cry on the initiatives that needs to be taken we have taken so much and learned so much that we know how and what needs to be done of course there are a lot of knowledge gap as i mentioned we don't know what is ccts and what was voluntary mechanism but that will come with the time we have been and i wouldn't say like you mentioned that ahead of time or when uh, actually china came up with this we had our perform achieve trade scheme so mm -hmm. you also mentioned that we were achieving our ndc targets compared to what we have actually initiated that was because of these initiatives we have taken so ccd is coming at the right time but it shall not be something that we shall learn from path scheme also or the loopholes that we have actually failed or didn't able to overcome so how we will overcome those gaps that is important while we are coming up with ccts but i won't say that it's actually a perfect time to work on it 